All right, so beautiful day here in Half Moon Bay, California. Uh, I'm at Surfers Beach, and I'm trying to come up with an idea for composition. All right, so I like the view in this direction. Uh, however, I feel like the cliffs to the left are kind of dark and heavy and I would need something over to the right to counterbalance. I could put some clouds in the sky. And another option is to make something of this scene here. I've been wanting to experiment with uh, a horizon that's just below or just above the center line to see how that feels. Typically I go with a high horizon or a low horizon. I'm painting over an old 11 by 14 inch panel and I'm going to go with the scene with the glare cliffs to the left. And then, as I mentioned, I might add some clouds to balance out so it's not just like lopsided to the left. Also, I could lighten the value of these cliffs so they're not so heavy. I may do that as well. All right, the first step is to get the big shapes in place. Um, and then I could become more specific with the lines, but I'm at first just looking for a nice or, or a pleasant arrangement. See, I'm gonna have the horizon actually just below the center line here. It's quite a bit of glare in the water in this area here. And there are some distant uh, cliffs or hills in the background. So I'm gonna include those. And then for the clouds, there are some wispy clouds that are illuminated. Step one when painting over an old panel is to eliminate the previous painting as soon as possible. I'm painting in the cloud shapes right here using titanium white with a touch of burnt sienna. It's interesting, when I use the burnt sienna as a tint, it almost leans towards yellow. It's really a nice warm color uh, that I find works well for illuminated clouds. All right, for the sky, I'm using titanium white, ultramarine blue. Uh, and phthalo blue and I want to make sure that the value of the sky is dark enough that the clouds stand out. So paying attention to values here. Keeping the uh, sky darker also allows me to get some nice blue, beautiful blue saturation. I'm using a number six natural bristle flat. This is a brand new brush that's so got pretty long bristles, holds a lot of paint. All right, so for the distant land here, again, paying attention to values, I want to make sure that this distant land is dark enough that it stands out against the sky, but light enough and cool enough in temperature that it recedes into the distance. So I'm using ultramarine titanium white and some burnt sienna. Obviously getting some burnt sienna into the mix here. And I will be fine tuning these colors and values, but for now I just want to make sure that the composition is working. In other words, a nice arrangement of shapes, simple shapes. So I'm trying to keep it very simple. Clouds, sky, cliffs, uh, distant hills, water, sand. For the water I've got a gray that's kind of leaning towards blue-green. It's got some phthalo in there. Uh, and it's a similar value to the distant hills. And I'm just going to leave some areas blank for the white water. And there's quite a bit of glare all in this area here. So I'm gonna leave that unpainted. Basically I'm squinting at the scene and I'm just looking for the darker portions of the water and deciding where I want my water line to be. Obviously I can change anything. This is all, you know, the paint is pretty thin at this point. So I could just wipe it out easily or scrape it off. Actually, I don't even think there's enough paint on here to scrape off. It would just be wipe it off with a paper towel or a rag. Okay. All right, for the cliffs, I've got a mixture of burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, some titanium white. And I'm going to start out with a fairly dark mixture here. Um, I, I know when I showed the scene in the camera, the camera darkens everything. It boosts the contrast. But I actually I can see into uh, the shadows on the cliffs here and there's some really nice warm tones. And as I mentioned, I want to keep these cliffs 
a little bit lighter in value to prevent them from feeling too heavy. And I'm paying attention to things like the top line here. I want this to be fairly irregular. And then the bottom as well. I want the line on the bottom to be interesting. And maybe break it up with some like rocks or something so that the lines aren't just straight lines. All right, next blocking in the sand shape here. And I'm paying attention to the relationship between the value of the sand and the white water. I wanna make sure that the sand is dark enough in value uh, that it allows the white water to really stand out and the glare that I'm gonna put out here. All right, so there's the block in. So I've got my basic shapes, just very simple. And at this point, I back up and I decide if there's anything that I don't like about the arrangement of the shapes. And I do think that I wanna see some sky below this cloud here. So I kind of want, I kind of want this to go off like this and maybe have this cloud broken up a little bit like that. Again, I'm just, I'm focusing on composition and, and the arrangement of shapes before I get into anything else, before I start refining anything. All right, I'm gonna lighten up the cloud a bit with some titanium white. So it stands out against the blue that I just put in. All right, I'm gonna tone down the clouds just with a touch of ultramarine. Overall, I think I do like the arrangement and I feel like the clouds do balance out the cliffs here. All right, now I've got titanium white and cadmium yellow medium and I've got the brush really loaded because I want to see what my lightest light looks like and whether you know I've got the other values correct or close and keeping the brush loaded applying a lot of paint allows me to get a higher value if the paint is thin you can see here it's not as bright but when I glob it on thick then it's much brighter all right, experimenting just putting touches of cadmium yellow medium in the areas where the glare is the brightest. I feel like I'm getting a nice glare effect here. I do want to keep the focus out here, so I think I'm going to turn down the brightness, <laughs> turn down the volume on some of these waves in the foreground here. I think it's really important when you're painting a scene to decide what it is that attracted you to the scene and then trying to uh, you know, feature those elements. All right, I'm gonna start adding some thicker paint to the water, but I want you to see how loaded the brush is. Keeping the paint thick allows me to have nice saturation and also some texture, which is really nice when painting something that has texture like water. I wanna be careful not to overwork this. So I'm walking back and I'm looking to see if there's anything magical happening. It's so important to do that because often we'll paint something and we're just, we just keep going and paint right over something that actually was kind of magical. So work quickly and walk back frequently. All right, where the wet sand meets the dry sand, there's some darker purplish tones. There's little bits of purple out in the distance here too. All right, so now I'm gonna start working on these cliff shapes here. And the darkest darks are right at the top. There are some plants on the top here that I think I do wanna include, but I'm gonna wait on those for a minute. And as usual, I'm squinting at the scene to simplify the shapes. It doesn't really matter what you're painting, whether you're painting a seascape or you're painting a building or whatever. It's always the same. It's you're just squinting and trying to break the scene down into simple shapes, regardless of what it is you're painting. All right, so I do like these shapes, but as I mentioned, I don't want these cliffs to feel too heavy. So even though in real life, these darks are quite dark, I am lightening them up with a lighter value gray here. I'm still paying attention to the relationship between these darks and the sky. And I think I've got enough contrast there for my liking. All right, I'm gonna experiment adding some plants. 
And instead of just making a bunch of vertical strokes, I want to do a combination horizontal and then maybe a few little verticals. These cliffs get warmer in temperature. I'm painting the shadow shapes here. There's a lot of warmth in the shadows. So I'm using the dark gray that I mixed up first as a guide to the values, but now I want to warm up. I want to warm up the shadow shapes. So I mixed up something that was sort of like a yellow ochre and then I darkened it with a purple mixture. So I went with uh, the complement of yellow, purple to darken it. All right, so now putting in the portion of the cliffs that's in the light. And I don't want to make this, uh, these light portions too light because I don't want it to compete with the white water. So always, always paying attention to the value relationships. Little bits of light here, here as well. I feel like I want to lighten up these distant cliffs just a bit, uh, but I do want to keep them saturated. They do get lighter as they go off in the distance. So down here, I'm gonna lighten it up a bit more. And I'm keeping the paint here thick as well so I can have some nice saturation. Uh, and there are some darker trees along the bottom here that I'll be adding in. But I wanna establish this value first. All right, and mixing in some titanium white to lighten it over here. Dark trees in the distance here are darker than the mountains and actually a bit darker than the water as well. And I'm trying to leave some of the burnt sienna sketch still visible. Nice to have those little bits of orange popping through. I'm switching up the brush direction here, doing some vertical strokes to suggest treetops. All right, so I'm gonna start reinforcing the colors and values in the sky. And the sky goes from sort of a cerulean over the mountains to more of an ultramarine up in this corner here. I'm actually gonna work light towards dark uh, in this particular case, just because I wanna establish the relationship between the sky and these distant mountains. And when I get this value relationship right, then I can darken up the sky up here accordingly. All right, now adding some more phthalo blue to the mix. And I wanna keep the paint thick in the sky so I get nice saturation, but I don't want too much texture because if the sky is too chunky, then, uh, then it doesn't feel sort of open and airy. It, it sort of comes forward in the picture plane. So trying to balance out having saturation uh, but not too much texture. All right, reinforcing some of the cloud shapes here using a purplish color. I want to keep the value shifts in the sky very delicate. Maybe just have temperature shifts, you know, having this purple at the bottom of the cloud. And then I'll add light if I need to, to help balance the composition. All right, so here is what I finished up with. This painting took about an hour to complete. Uh, as I mentioned, I was a little concerned about having this land mass over to the left. I didn't want it to feel too heavy, but I do think by having clouds in the sky here, um, it does create some interest over here that does help to balance out the composition. Also, I decided to keep the cliffs lighter in value so they wouldn't feel as heavy. And then as I talked about while painting, I was trying to be really careful not to paint over any sort of magical bits that happened. I do like this segment right in here. This happened really quickly and I walked back and noticed that I liked the shape of the reflective sand and then also of these waves in the foreground. And I honestly would have painted over those if I had not walked back. Um, as I've mentioned in previous videos, you just get into autopilot where you just putting on the paint and you can paint over some really nice effects that you're achieving because you're just not aware of it. So further encouragement to walk back as much as possible while painting. 
All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. It's the Patreon support that helps keep me making these videos and it's much appreciated. Other than that, stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next video.